Hi, my name is Christopher Lind, and this is the Moral Economy column for May 2009. What's fairness got to do with it? You know, the French working class really has style. You have to hand it to them. When 20 angry workers at the 3M plant in Pithiviers, south of Paris, told the director he couldn't leave until he improved the severance packages for 110 laid-off workers, they fed him mussels and fries for dinner. What a way to get noticed. It sure beats the leaden style of the European ruling class. The French energy giant Total announced the biggest annual profit in French corporate history, and less than a month later announced the elimination of 550 jobs. French President Nicolas Sarkozy provided 12 billion euros to the automotive sector. And what did the German tire maker Continental do? They responded by eliminating 1,000 210 jobs in Clairois, north of Paris. No moulet frit for this CEO. They threw eggs at him. And the ultimate French insult. The eggs weren't even cooked. Scottish pensioners took a more pedestrian route when they picketed the home of former Royal Bank of Scotland CEO Sir Fred Goodwin. How could he have been rewarded by having his pension doubled to over a million Canadian dollars when he led the bank into bankruptcy and their savings into ruin. In Connecticut, activists organized a bus tour to homes of AIG executives who received $220 million in retention payments after the U.S. federal government invested $182 billion to prevent total collapse. Canadians are so much more restrained. Where were the pensioners of the Toronto Star when their CEO, Rob Pritchard, resigned after eight years on the job and received an $11 million cushion for his fall. Does it make a difference that the Toronto Star is not bankrupt yet? They only lost $180 million last year. The stock price only fell 70% and they only laid off 500 people. On what basis would we say that people are justified in their outrage? Pritchard's settlement was approved by the board the German tire company broke no laws when it laid off 1,200 workers. The common complaint is that these payments are not fair. Why should the bosses get a fat severance check while the workers lose their pensions and get a pink slip? What's fairness got to do with it, you ask? Well, contrary to certain ideological claims that economics is a value-free science, all economies are embedded in a set of moral assumptions about how our common life should be organized. When we limit the discipline of economics to matters of scientific technique, we render the moral foundation of our economy invisible. Communities can tolerate a lot of variation in economic practice, but when the variations become both extreme and common, then people react. In times of crisis, ordinary people rise up and insist on a renewal of the moral foundations of our economic life. They insist on fairness rather than bias. They insist on subsistence for all rather than affluence for a few. They insist on compassion for the vulnerable rather than indifference from the elite. These are the characteristics of a moral economy and they become visible in times of crisis just like these.